Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a video on me making a character from scratch using a few different modifiers and stuff. A little bit of a workflow that I've been that I've been following recently. And anyway, I'm using Blender 2.65, which is the most recent one at the moment. And one of the things that I like to use is the skin modifier. I'm just going to Oh no, here we go. I'm just going to add the skin modifier on so you can see what it looks like and as you can see if you haven't used it before it just basically gets all of the vertices and it makes it so that the the lines form mesh which I think is really useful for starting off when you're building the base of your mesh Anyway, what I'll do is I'll select all of them except two and delete those. Just so we have one line. I'm also going to mirror. And I want to do the mirror, have the mirror higher up on the stack than the skin so that when they're together, they merge nicely. And to get them to merge nicely, I'm just going to set them to zero on the x axis. So anyway, this will be basically the spine of my character. And to make legs, we just extrude off with the E key. I should put it, probably put on screen cast keys. I should have remembered that before. So anyway, we have our feet. This dotted line around this vertice means that that's the root node. We probably want the root node in the center. And to do that, we just click it and we choose the mark root in the modifier stack. And that makes that the root node. And I won't bother saving this. Um, so I'll move the torso up a little bit. I won't spend too much time on getting this perfect because this is just kind of more of a tutorial. But anyway, I'll extrude off some arms. And to change the size of stuff, we can use control A and that'll let us scale up and down how much a vertice expands the mesh around it. Then I can just subdivide in between these two and change that around a little bit so that I can have the mesh as specific as I want. I'm going to subdivide here and have one of these as a kind of a hip and to get that to work the way that I want it to I'm going to mark this as a loose vertice so this vertice is like the torso and I can just position the top of the foot wherever I want and Again, I'm not going to spend too much time making him look amazing. This is just more of a tutorial. I'll sub subdivide. I'll do the same kind of thing again to make the shoulders. That looks okay so far. And to do the arms and the legs, I normally subdivide and then I do three cuts and then it's just a fairly simple matter of alternating, expanding and shrinking them and then you have a fairly decent looking arm fairly quickly this is a bit of a muscle man but you can tweak him to whatever you would like him to look like do the same on the legs And also for the feet, we'll just extrude off another one. And I'll subdivide that again. And just expand in the center. And I'll fix up the feet later in... When I've finished making this part of it, we'll collapse it down. But anyway, we'll get to that soon enough. I'll do a quick hand. For the hands, again, I'm going to do a loose vertice. Uh, I shall first off switch to the top view 
and I'll ex extend off another one. This will be my loose vertice, and then I can expand off the hands. I'm not going to do a fully detailed hand. I'm just going to do basically a just a thumb and the main bulk of the hand. And that's good enough. Good enough for what I'm doing for now anyway. That can be tweaked later. And I'll do a quick head again following the same kind of procedure. Just extend up and subdivide. I'll subdivide with two cuts this time. And there we have our, our rough character. Okay, so now I've got to that point, I have I have my rough kind of wireframe of my guy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse these modifiers uh, just by applying them. I need to jump out of edit mode, I just did that by hitting tab, so I apply that and I apply that. And then I have the actual mesh to work with. What I normally like doing is I like to uh, use a mirror modifier um, and to do that first I need to change this a bit, I'll just do a ring cut around the middle and then just delete all the vertices on one side. And then add the mirror modifier. Cool. So then we have our character that's able to be modeled fairly easily. Just going to hide some of this stuff. Okay, now we can jump into actually moving some vertices around. I'll jump back into edit mode. I'll just, his feet are spun around a bit weird. I'm just going to delete this edge loop and I'm gonna how you do this will be different with each character but I'm just gonna rotate this around a bit because it's rotated a little bit too far for my liking I'll just do it roughly like this and I'm gonna get the bottom faces and just scale on the Z axis by zero which will flatten it so we have nice flat feet. The topology around the foot is a little bit weird, but yeah, you can spend more time yourself tweaking it. Anyway, from there you can spend a bit more time putting more uh, putting more geometry around the face and stuff. Again, I won't spend too much time doing it. This is just more of a showing showing some of the tools that I use in the workflow. So, the next step is to collapse the modifiers and move on to a bit more of a sculpting phase. I will jump back out of edit mode into object mode, apply the modifiers and then I will add the multi-resolution modifier which is a pretty cool modifier. If I hit subdivide a few times then my mesh gets a lot smoother and then I can jump into sculpt mode and also what I want to do is put symmetry on on the left hand side just hit mirror X or if your model's facing a different way or your symmetry set up differently then model then mirror on one of the other axes axes anyway using a combination of 
control to subtract, normal mouse to push out and shift to smooth. That's for the sculpt draw brush anyway. You can actually see it change around as I do various stuff. But anyway, with that we can put a bit of detail onto the model. I'll just do a quick little bit of modeling, nothing too fancy. Make him a big muscle man. Anyway, that's good enough. And one of the good things about multi-res is you can jump up and down different levels. So if you make changes up at this level, you can see the changes that I made like if I make a big change like that and then jump down oops, a few levels you can see it's applied it at that level as well anyway so once you ha have your sculptured character we can move on to giving him a texture and uh, normal maps and all the rest of that kind of stuff and to do that I jump into edit mode what we want to do is we want to get this character and we want to let me just open up a UV image editor we want to unwrap him and if I just do that with the smart UV project this is the fastest way to do it if if you don't know much about UV unwrapping, it just basically it gets all of these polygons and it maps them out so onto a 2D image so that you can then fill them in with texture. To do that, you just add a new texture. I can change this to paint mode so I can paint directly on this. And as I paint on this, if I change this to texture mode as well, and to make things more convenient, I'll also make it shadeless when I draw on this you'll see that it appears on the character itself and we can also go into texture paint mode and paint on the character in the 3D viewport which is pretty cool But one of the problems with using Smart UV Project is sometimes you get weird creases around the angles or around around where the seams are. Normally it's better to, for a character like this, you could, um, you could unwrap him by marking seams. And the way to do that is to mark all the vertices that you want to where you want to cut and I'll just do some really quick ones now and you press control E and mark seam and then if I unwrap that we can see in the image pane if I just get the rest of this white then this is it looks it's a bit cluttered around the corners it ha it's not the best unwrapping it's not too bad consider I've only spent five seconds on it but that unwraps it a little bit better and if you spend more time on it then it's it's hard to see the prob what the problems are unless you actually spend time on it and then hit a wall and realize that there's a problem but it's just it's better to well it's something that you learn more about as you keep playing with it anyway I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer so from there we have an unwrapped mesh with a texture and 
the good thing about the multi-res modifier is that we can paint it and do stuff in in whatever resolution we want to. If we want we can change the preview so we can do blocky stuff and we can also do it at the highest resolution. And one other thing that's worth noting is the bake tool. Baking's pretty pretty handy. There's a few cool things you can do with it. Ambient inclusion is one that I like doing. If you use this in combination with other maps, then it just adds a lot of atmosphere to your characters. As you can see, it's just basically, it's kind of done like fake shadows. It's a bit grainy. What I can do is I can increase, I'm pretty sure I can increase it over... Oh, maybe I can't. Maybe I should look that up somewhere else. Anyway, I'm sure there's some way to increase the... This graininess is from the amount of samples used. If you use more samples, then it just takes more time to render. But anyway, there we have the character, and we can paint on him. Using this tool over here, we can choose, choose colors. And... I'll just really roughly give him a bit of a blue shirt. And again, the more time you spend on this, the better the better it will be. And you can bake this stuff on by assigning different materials to stuff. But anyway, There we go, he's a bit weird looking. But hopefully that gives you a rough workflow that you can use to get a character to a state where you can use it in a game or something like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching and make sure you comment, subscribe, like, etc. Thanks for watching guys.